when you come to God, you must leave your worldly wisdom behind and embrace the wisdom that is of God. What you can possess that the ordinary man cannot possess is in the spirit. It is in heavenly places. Now this Holy Ghost we know is the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. That is the higher realm. We don't just cast away that spirit. God must also lead us to turn away from the iniquity. There is a time that the enemy must be allowed to come after the word of God. It is in that attempt that mastery will be gained. All right. So last week we spoke about um, dealing with demonic oppression. We spoke about the inner aspect and then the outer aspect of demonic oppression and our focus was on the outer aspect amen yes so um today i want to dwell a little bit on the outer aspect because i sense in my heart that there is the grace of god available for us to believe God for certain things to leave us. Amen. James said in James chapter 5 verse 13 that is any afflicted, let him pray. So that's where we'll start from. Amen. That's where we'll start from. I explained to you the nature of the inner demonic affliction and how it is tied to the state of our hearts and what it is that we love. So if you love what is evil, if you love what is selfish, automatically you are in consort with devils. And even though it sounds a, a bit spooky, um, that's the truth. Amen. And the only way to deal with this kind of demonic activity is repentance, to turn away from the affections for these evils. Do you understand that? And that process takes time. That is the process of our regeneration. So in being regenerated, in being changed by God, certain demonic influences also leave us. Amen. But then there is the external part, which normally has the internal um, influence as its foundation. And um, normally it happens with the most external part of us. And um, last time I was explaining that something like your inability to concentrate on truth when it is being shared, to concentrate on, on truth. So it is not even that the truth is difficult to understand, but it is something that is unwelcomed um, so far as your mind is concerned. So it's like your mind keeps shifting and keeps moving and is unable to latch onto the truth. Hallelujah. And somehow you end up remaining in your confused state. Something like this is a sign of demonic activity. It is a sign of demonic activity. Um, something like your mind, as you have it now, your mind being invaded by filthy thoughts. Um, I, I explained to you that everybody's mind is invaded by filthy thoughts. Hallelujah. But there is a certain level of invasion that becomes makes the person powerless. It is like it is like the idea that your mind is yours. For instance, I've shared, I've spoken to people that I was telling them that do you know that your mind is yours and that you can choose to think what you want to think. And I realized that such a thought or such an idea is foreign to them. It is like, yeah. My mind is mine, but that is not how I feel. It is not my experience because I find that certain things can enter my mind and it takes me for a ride. But those that are normal, okay, you realize that even when filthy thoughts invade your mind, you can, um, you can, how do you call it? Not, not, not shake yourself. Even though shake yourself is true, but you can um, take control you can take control. You get it. So maybe some filthy thoughts are coming into your mind. You can decide not to think those thoughts. You can stop. You can hold your breath. And, and that's when you learn that 
um, your mind is related to your, your breathing. So when you want to stop thinking something, it, you find that automatically, impulsively, you hold your breath. Do you get it? When, when you want to admit a certain thought, you find that you breathe in. That's how come the breathing in of the Lord into us, which has to do with the spirit of truth coming into us, um, is inspiration. Hallelujah. The, the, there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. That word inspiration is the breathing into. The breathing into. You get it? So in, in receiving inspiration, receiving spiritual knowledge, we breathe in. Hallelujah. It, 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 we also expel negative knowledge by breathing out. You get it? Or we use the knowledge that is in us to, um, we, we superimpose that knowledge upon our situations or upon another person by breathing out. So in scripture, to speak is to breathe out. Actually, speaking is breathing out without you being aware that you are breathing out. Hallelujah. Please understand that. So breathing out has to do with the going forth of spirit. And when we do that, spirit goes out, uh, out of us. Now, in the same way, if we want to expel a negative influence, we find that it's related to your, to your breathing. Hallelujah. But you, you, you realize that at times, even though you know that your mind is yours, you may find that still in certain scenarios or situations in your life, certain thoughts invade you to the point where it paralyzes you. It, you are unable to um, take hold of yourself. And, and, and here we talk about something like depression. Okay, You find that certain hopeless thoughts, no matter the evidence, that is presented to you, um, you believe that your life is hopeless. No matter the encouragement that is given to you, no matter the um, message that is preached to you, uh, for some, at the time when what they are being told is happening, they seem to have a certain sense of hope. But the moment the message ends, they return to that hopeless state. For some also, it's, it's so severe that even when you are speaking to them, they cannot hear you. And I've seen situations like that. You realize that the person is far gone. Hallelujah. Now, now the problem here is that you must feel the presence of the ability to choose, to make a choice, if, if you are going to start working with God. Do you get it? So if truth is, is brought to you, one of the initial feelings that a person must have in relation to that truth is the sense of, um, control that he has over his own mind to analyze the information that is being brought to him or her, to consider it and to make a choice to either accept it or reject it and to also go on to do or not do what it is that the truth says. Now, this is the basic state a person must be in in relation to truth. Hallelujah. Please you understand that. Now, that is the state of freedom. It means that you are free to make a choice. You are free to accept the truth. You are free to consider the truth. Now, the external demonic influence removes the sense of freedom, even though it is there. So you find that information is coming to you, but you feel you don't have that sense of freedom to even consider and accept and begin to walk with that truth. Hallelujah. Please you understand that. So it's like, it's like something has worked on you to steal or to rob you of your freedom. It's like you are not free in that matter. And that, that's how a depressed person is. It's like they know they should not be depressed, but they are depressed. Hallelujah. When they sit and they consider why they are depressed, it doesn't make sense, but they are depressed. Somebody can get up and feel strongly that they are going to die. They are going to die. If you check them, you say, ah, you are well, right? But they are going to die. That's how they feel. Now, that is a devil that has found its, its way into the mind of such a person. I've dealt with people that felt that there, there's someone that I was dealing with. The person is here. I think that sharing this will help you. Okay? So the person was saying that there's something in her head. Do you see? It's like there's something. So as you're saying, you feel like there's something in your head and it's shaking. Do you get it? So... I told the person, no, there's nothing in your head. 
Then the person said, no, she can feel that there's something in her head. Do you see? So I said, okay, then go and take a scan. Because at that point, it's like she's the one that feels it, right? And normally, when you are talking with such people, there is, there is an overwhelming feeling of demonic activity that they themselves, you see, when the devils are influencing your mind, it's not like you sense that there's another person standing by you. On few occasions that you sense that. But generally, it's, there are thoughts that seem to be your own. There are, there are feelings that seem to be your own. And they seem to be so strong on you that it's like, it's real. Do you get it? So I told her that, okay, go and take a scan. And when she took the scan, there was nothing in her head. Now, you would think that that ends it, right? No, she, she still believed that there's something in her head. Now, you, you realize then that this is not just the, a normal way of thinking. There's a devil that has attached itself and is influencing the person. Do you get it? There's a devil that has attached itself and is influencing the person. Uh, a lot of the mental health issues are like that. And because it's, it's, there are devils that attach themselves, it, that's why it's difficult to heal a mental health issue. Normally, they give them medication to numb them, but it doesn't really correct it. And it's because normally there are devils um, involved. So a depressed person is somebody whose re reality has been hijacked. And I, when I say reality, I mean the external reality has been hijacked. And the interesting thing is that you can be very, doing very well spiritually. You can be doing very well spiritually. You can be advancing spiritually, but you can still be depressed. And it is because when it comes to um, the things on the inside affecting us on the outside, it takes time. It takes time. For instance, some of us are sick with certain sicknesses that we didn't start. It's, it was started by uh, maybe 10 generations uh, before us. But because it, it has been passed on, and, and it didn't start as a sickness, it started as an evil, a sin. But with that sin being passed on and it becoming very integral to the life of a person, eventually it, it begins to take shape also in the body. Do you get it? Uh -huh. So you may find that yes, you are set prone to certain reactions, even allergic reactions and all that, that is not you. They say it's in your DNA, right? But God didn't make DNA to be infested with um, sicknesses. You get it. So somehow we did it. And how, what else can we do that will hurt us badly except sin? Every affliction of man began from sin. Maybe the time you discovered it, it didn't look like sin because it had moved even to the external part of us. Do you get it? But when you trace its source, and normally not even from you, but from generations before you, you will find that it always began with sin. Hallelujah. Please, you get it. So some of these things, you find then that they are embedded in the external because of the internal root. But it takes time. Please, you understand that. It also means that when, if God got you and really regenerated you to the point that he, he really wants to, eventually what is on the outside that you are afflicted with, it will go away. Do you understand that? So if your regeneration got to a certain point, you will never be depressed. Do you get it? But we don't have time. Amen. We don't have time. So God has also made it said that even the things that are on the external can be dealt with. They can be dealt with. And in many cases, they can be dealt with in such a way that as they are dealt with, then God can help you build a foundation to sustain it for the meantime. Hallelujah. God can help you build a foundation to sustain it. So Jesus can heal you and say, go and sin no more. Do you get it? So that he heals you of the affliction. And then he says that there's something that you missed. There's something that you did wrong that allowed for the affliction. Normally you say, okay, then let him correct what you did wrong and the affliction will disappear, right? But here, no, he heals you and says, go and sin no more. So God can then deliver you from the external thing. Because some of you may just have general weakness that you don't even know what it is. Do you get it? And the doctors will tell you that a, a, a lot of it can be psychological. So you are just weak in your body. There's a devil. There's a devil. Amen. There's a devil. 
If God finished with your insights, this devil will be flashed out from the external without you trying. But your insights are not finished. Hallelujah. What do you think? Yeah. And that's why from time to time, then God provides grace, special grace to help remove some of these things from there so that you can, you can be free. And I believe that today is one of those days. Amen. Yeah, because I kept on feeling that impression that this is what we should do. This is what we should pray. We should look into the matter. Hallelujah. And I want you to also want to, because if you don't want to, just like in the repentance that happens on the inside, if you don't want to, if you don't even think you have the problem, God can help you. Because remember last week I explained to you that it takes the same format to, to be changed from the inside. You have to see the evil in yourself. Do you see? You, you have to set your heart. You have to see the evil in yourself. In the same way, to be changed on the outside, you have to see the problem. You have to see that it is, not, it is a problem that must not be there. Just like the evil, it is a sin against God. I'm convinced that a lot of hearing, um, even though it helps, is just the foundation to see into the spirit. So when you are hearing, be looking to see into the spirit. Jesus said that it is the spirit that uh, giveth life. The flesh profited nothing, right? He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So that's what will give the life. Amen. That's what will give the life. So now you look at yourself as you are in the exile and you see that this is not what God wants for you. Hallelujah. This is, what, this, is not, this is not the state that God wants for you. So this is against God. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? And that is why you must do something about it. God did not make your mind to be invaded by demonic influence. God did not make, your, make you to just be free for the devil to move in and move out. If you are like that, God, the time that God wants to use you is the time that the devil also wants to use you. What do we do? Hallelujah. So God does not like those things. And, I, and I'm sure we'll have time to look at that. But today, just know that God doesn't like that. So in the same way that you see the evil in your heart, the evil affections, you see this is a sin against God. When you also see yourself in the external, in the affliction, you must know that this is a sin against God. It's a sin against God. Hallelujah. It's a sin against God. We learned what sin is, right? It's transgression. So your inward parts, you are transgressing the law of God in the sense that you are breaking divine order and therefore the Lord is unable to dwell inside you. In the same way, when your body is sinning against God, it is breaking divine order. And because of that, God will not be able to function inside you. So if God is even working from the inside of you, but the enemy has hijacked your external part, how does God come out? Hallelujah. Some of you have extreme shyness. Extreme shyness. So you think that, okay, you are just shy. No, I'm also telling that there's a demon. You see, everybody can be shy. Some of you will say, walk well, okay, here, you can't walk. Especially the ladies. You, 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 know, you, you understand? So you are shy. But there's a certain type of shyness too. Do you see? There's a certain type of shyness. That you know that, no, this shyness. Oh, you can't possess yourself. Remember, the key is to be able to enter freedom when you are attacked. Because if you enter freedom when you are attacked, then you can think and consider before God how you break free. But if when you are attacked and you cannot possess yourself to enter freedom, how can you fight back? Do you see? So there's a certain shyness that grips you, that changes you. So some of you, you are very great on your own and in your room. Very spirit-filled. Do you understand that? But when you come out, the spirit can come. I mean, have, you, have you seen that before? Like some of you maybe even come and preach, you prepare. Do you see? You prepare. You prepare. You prepare. But when you stand here, that's when you realize that you fear men. And once you fear men, God can come. No matter how you felt the anointing when you were in your house prepared, maybe you even fasted. Maybe God even visited you, an angel spoke to you. Yes, sir. So you came with a word from God. But if the devil can shut your outside, the inside, juicy. It will be like BD. Do you know BD? That's how they make BD. <laughs> you see, BD is anaerobic what? Um, combustion, right? 
Please, am I right? Yeah. So they put the wood inside the soil and they burn it without air, limiting the air as much as possible. Yeah. So that's how it will become. The fire of God will turn into <laughs> charcoal. <laughs> because there is no external expression. Yeah, you shut it inside. Hallelujah. What do you think? But imagine this thing could not grip you. You could actually be on fire, then we'll be blessed. So I have a problem with the fact that something is gripping me because I'm suffering too. That's a problem with life. If you suffer, your neighbor suffers. It's not just you. Because I must get something from you, I can't get it. It's like if you, if you are poor, you are not the only one that is suffering. Those that can depend on you too will suffer. If you are rich, you are not the only one that will enjoy. Those that depend on you will also be enjoyed. If you are happy, you are not the only one that will be blessed. Those that are in your vicinity will also feed off your happiness and your positive spirit. If you are also obnoxious, you are not the only one. You will all suffer. If you have anger issues, it's not only your heart that will beat. We all, our heart will beat. When your anger is about to come, do you understand that? That's why your overcoming is not just for you. It's for everybody. Amen. So what you cannot do, what you cannot do is not just your life. It's also those that will be blessed if you could do it. Do you understand that? It's very important. So when, when, when you are afflicted, others also suffer from the affliction. Hallelujah. Please, you see, imagine you could rise up and be what God wants you to be. Imagine the kind of good that could come out of you if you were truly free. Imagine. Imagine the influence you bring to bear. Imagine the people that will be delivered. You know, you can also go and deliver people. Do you know? You can cast out devils from people. You don't believe. You don't believe. It's part of the affliction. Because the enemy can convince you that you there, you can't do anything. Is it the feeling that me, I can do something, but you can't do something? Is the enemy speaking to you? Instead of you, your own is very strong. So no matter, so it can even be that at an, the preacher will come speaking of high things. But the enemy inside you will lower it into very small, acceptable things. You know, the small, acceptable things. Like you can only do small, small, few things. But well, the message says you can do great things. But the devil inside your mind will convince you that this person by you is for the great things. But you, you in particular, do you see? And that's how affliction, especially when the affliction has taken you very long. You, you can't even believe that. You, 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 hey, you can't believe it. You can't believe it. But God also gives grace. Hallelujah. And, and there's a time that if you give yourself to that grace, you then now you can push back against the enemy. Do you see? You can do that. You can do that. You can tell you. Everybody gets angry. Who doesn't get angry here? Okay, everybody gets angry. By your type of anger, we know. Do you see? We know. Even you know that this is your type of anger. No matter what the enemy will try to do is to help bring you argument to justify it. And then you conclude that it's, it's people that are annoying. You are not the one that has an anger problem. Do you see? But when this your anger can show it grips you in a way that you become very distracted. Then when you finish, you justify that you were angry. That is why. But everybody also gets angry. But how come you dear? This is your anger. When your anger comes, your chest is, is almost entering your mouth. Do you see? Is that your, your, that your anger, it was from childhood. This is, so that spirit, when you see such angers trying to develop in your children, you have to begin to cast it out. So when you see it like that, you don't see that, hey, my child is my child. No, no, from time to time, you yeah, come. <laughs> put, put hand on the child's head. You understand? So you realize that with time, because these days you see that, you feel her. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Something they, they didn't see, they allowed you to grow with it. And it's there. Now, I'm saying that it's a devil. 
you won't be, this not, I'm not being hypothetical. I'm not even speaking metaphorically. No, I'm saying it's a devil. If we check, if we open, there's a devil there. I can confirm it for you. So don't even check. It's a devil that is there. Hallelujah. And that devil can lead you. When he leaves you, you see that ah, the normal life is that you, you should be able to manage your anger. You think that the normal life is that hey, when we're young, we used to have friends like that. Have you, have you, did you have friends like that? That we just decided to fight. It's just a fight. Then they, they took a big stone and used it to whack your head. Within that shop, you, something must interfere with your thinking. Something must happen. How come you can pick this big thing? Have you, didn't you consider all that could happen? One day, um, at a idea said that we're coming, we're climbing up the hill, right? And then there was a fight, so we can't move. You see that junction, we can't move. Then it's, it's between somebody that was in a trotro and the trotro mate and driver. So kick, 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 and then the person got out from the car, right? And then I think it probably was about fair, not fair. Like some of you, mate takes your 10 pesos, it turns into, you have anger issues. It's a devil that is inside 10 pesos. They say you don't like it that you are cheated. Please, there are, there are things that we call being cheated, not ten pesos. Do you see? Because something else should come into mind. Way, wait, wait. The situation is ten pesos worth your energy, your investment for the next thirty minutes to fight a battle that will lift your BP. You get it. Dr. Chi was sharing with me someone that came to his um, consulting room. He was trying to manage the person's BP. He did that, gave the medication, it wasn't working. He would come, it's like that, he would come, it's like that. Then he, he was interviewing the man and he found out that he's on a new of us will be true man also. Yes. And he asked, he was able to get the person to leave the man also, right? The quarrel to leave it, the BP came down. So you're about to die. <laughs> and it's because a demon is killing you. No, 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 listen. A demon is killing you. A demon is killing you. You don't believe. A demon is killing you. Hallelujah. Some of you, to your own, is very subconscious. And it goes, it was passed on. You know, you can pass anger issues on. Yeah. Either you directly or your own was recessive, right? It was hidden, so it has not come out. So you pass it from your great, great something to your child, or they pass it to you. But at the time, the anger issue, we don't learn it. And we hope. Yes, I will say what? Then you have to do something about it. You see? So this person that got out of the car and fought with them, do you know what he did? He picked a big stone, like stone that is like, it's like cement block or something, and use it to hit the windscreen of the car, of the turtle. Yes. Like simple car mate driver. He picked it and used it to hit the windscreen. No, you said there's a devil, right? There's no, no, you can be angry, you can be angry and go. You can be angry and say you are not serious. You can be angry. Like so many things. Like, but this thing, this one, it's like the devil inside is trying to also put you in trouble. Some lawyer was explaining to us how some guy went to the club and then fight, 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 fight. These things that they do at the club, they, you have drunk things, you have, you see, so small something. Maybe I dance, somebody's dancing with your girl, somebody comes to pass. Why are you trying to dance with my girl? That kind of thing, right? And then the person took this guy. And then in the fight, held his legs, right? And then used the head. Blah! And the person died. So this person that did it is in jail. I, I think for life or something. Quick. Do you understand that? I'm sure what the person did was really bad. You get it. But Charlie, something took over. Something took over. Hallelujah. So if you want your anger, <laughs> we say, well, in our family, we are unable to get good marriage. We are unable to get good marriage. So you start praying. 
right? And the prayer is that God should get you a good marriage and that your marriage should last because the marriages keep ending. Keep ending. And then you, so that's your prayer. But you, have not, you are not listening to God. You know you can pray to God and not listen. It's one of the most foolish things to do because when you go to God, what are you looking for? Is it not so that God will impress something upon you? That's why you go. But if you pray mindlessly, it's a waste of time. You should, you should, it's, it's, like, it's like talking to somebody that you know will be replying to you anytime soon. And the more you wait in, in prayer, the more you are waiting for the reply. Something, an influence. And if you don't get a reply, when you finish praying and you are moving about in your daily duties, you should be paying attention to God, looking for that reply. Do you see? So it, 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 there, there has to be a reply. Do you see? So this person is praying that, God, I want good marriage. I want this. I want this. But if you listen to God, you may discover that your family, your issue is that you, you have anger issues. So the reason why you don't have good marriage is that, so the devil is trying to take your marriage away. But there's another attack before the actual attack. That attack is anger issues. And with that anger issues, you destroy every good marriage. Right? So maybe small thing, then you, you destroy it. Small thing, then you destroy it. So you, you get angry and walk away from good things. So that's the problem. So if, you, if the anger issue is solved, you'll be fine. It's not that, oh, there are more people who are not going to be And I say, oh, they won't me now, worry, Papa. There's an anger issue. So the devil fighting maybe your marriage or preventing you from having a, a, a good marriage is, is in your anger. Do you see? There are some of you, you, you are going to make the wrong choice in who you marry. And it's because the devil has already located you and has trapped you. So do you know where the devil is? The devil is in your perception of beauty. So if that's where the devil is, you, you argue by his death. Now, um, when I deal with people, I tell you, you want to tell them this is your thing, but they won't believe. Do you see? So you see, you see how you say, oh, what a beautiful woman. I'm saying that with some of you, the devil has hijacked that one. So your perception of beauty has been hijacked. And because of that, your perception of what you love has also been hijacked. So maybe a woman will be presented to you, that is good. But because your perception of beauty has been hijacked, you don't find the woman attractive. So you say it's not your taste. And the question, are we not supposed to get who we like? Right? But what you don't know is that you are under attack. You know how that demon shaped that your perception of beauty? Through pornography, through watching and doing such things. So it's, it has not just destroyed your heart, but even what beautiful is, beautiful Kekenokrano as a son. Do you see? So your fantasies have been warped. What, what you would think, wow, this is beautiful, has been affected. So this is what you do. You would, through that, go and choose somebody that will not work for you. Do you see? But the question is that, so should I choose somebody that is not beautiful? No. The devil needs to go from your eyes. Do you know that what we call beautiful, we are trained with it. Have you met somebody that is with somebody that you say, mm. <laughs> do you see? And the person doesn't also know how to do I mean, there are people even in this church, a guy comes and says, oh, we are, it's not my type, it's not my type, do you see? And then a few adjustments, you know adjustments, like, like we take the hammer and chisel, and then we, we, we are not breaking anything, right? but we are moving things a bit. You understand? And then the person, the same lady that said, the guy is not nice and things, the lady is dying for the guy. So you need just small adjustment. With that adjustment, the devil goes away. You see how simply the devil can go? Then your mind clear. I've seen some that the lady now didn't know what to do. Some of you, it's pain that will make you also make the devil go away. Because when you lose that thing, then you wake up and say, ah, I saw I wanted it. Then from that time, the devil goes away from your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please are here. So even your, your conception of beautiful, and some of you gentlemen here, you are about to enter that trap. I tell you the truth. If you do not shift your conception of beauty, you will choose the wrong woman and you suffer for the next 40 years. It's like it's a joke, right? But it's true. You suffer for the next 40 years. 
Hey, pastor, you, you, no problem, no problem, no problem. You see, if I tell you what was in my heart, do you see, you won't believe. Because what was in my heart, only God and I know. Do you see, so you won't believe. Do you see, I'm not saying that when you go and there are beautiful women standing there, just remove all of them from there and then go for the ugly one. Because some of the ugly ones too are bad. You so that's not my point. But my point is that your judgment as to who is correct for you is wrong. Because that if a correct person stands before you, you will not know, except it's a coincidence that the correct person meets up with your wrong perception of beauty. Then you say, okay. But the devil is also setting you up. So most likely, is the wrong person with the beauty that you like that will stand before you. Hallelujah. You don't believe. You see, this is so, this thing, eh? it's, it's so the main thing, like, like it's the main thing, oh, but you joke with it. You joke with it. You think that it's just a nice thing. But what are you saying? Because you said that's the only thing you need to get rid of. You can be free. You can be free. And now, some few months after you marry this person, everything becomes normal for you. You hold everything. You touch everything. You explore every place. And maybe you explore one, two, three, but you explore many times. So it becomes a regular thing. You see? Yeah. So that you have to kill him. You see? That's when you begin to consider that, ah, so I'm crossing out here. <laughs> the point is that the devil was after your peace of mind for the next 40 years. Some of you, because of that, you will not be able to serve God. What will plague you, you can't get out. Your, what will burden your heart? It's almost like you can't get rid of that burden to look beyond yourself and to, to touch the lives of others. Is that you can? And it's because what you saw was beauty. And that beauty, the enemy was preparing you for it from your infancy. You see, but that devil can leave your head. It's as if it cannot go the media. That's my type. It's, you, you are trained to have that type. What you call your type, you are trained to have it. So if you say you cannot do with butter, without bottles, then if the woman doesn't have enough bottles, do you understand? Enough bottles. Bottles, you have bottles and they share trousers. If the woman doesn't have enough bottles to wear trousers, you don't like. Do you see, I'm also saying that there's a bag. You, you need a bag, a virus in your mind that makes you feel that way. When God removes that virus, you say, wow. I like it. Even without buttons, I still like it. It's unbelievable, but it's true. You see, so you say, oh, but what, what is this small, small dot standing there? Do you understand? Something that if the hand must hold, then it should be big enough or a bit bigger than the hand. So that the hand will be full. A handful is better than <laughs> an empty hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you see? Sir, there's a bag that is in your head. If that devil leaves you, you realize that size, whatever, you are fine. You realize that. So you see how something as simple as your taste, a bag can enter it. A devil can enter what you call your taste. I want a tall, um, uh, what gentleman? Take tall. Do you understand? <laughs> I don't want a man that I'm taller than. Because of him, I cannot wear heels. Do you see? You see, there's a bag here. You, you are, except by accident, you will not, you, you are in trouble. You are in trouble, except by accident. But you can, this bag can leave your head. 
this bag can leave your head. Those that are with people that are shorter than them, they, is it not the same eyes they have? How come that they are able to appreciate such people? How come? It's because they don't have your type of devil inside their head. So you want to choose, maybe God should, your prayer is that God should deliver you from such um, mental problems. Because this is a mental problem. Because if you ask the person you are choosing, what are you going to do with the person? Let's list all the things you'll be doing with your husband. Let's list all the things you'll be doing with your wife. And check if height, do you see, affects any of them. Check. Do you see? Oh, check. What are some of the things? What, what must a husband be? See, what is it not a husband you are looking for? Is it not a husband? So there's definition for a husband. What must a husband be? There's definition for a wife. What must a wife be? So, but the, the sexual part is also very important. I'm saying that that sexual, there's a bag in your head. But even the sexual part, when you go, 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 eventually, I, how many times and how many, what are you going to be doing? Do you see? But you won't believe it. It's because there's a bag there. And that's my point. So young men that are here to choose, that somehow no woman is enough for you. And young women that are here to choose, that somehow no man, no good man is enough for you. I'm saying that you have a devil. Oh, pastor. Yes. You have a devil. Of your taste is like, we have to really like when we bring, hey, when we bring thousand people, one inside it is your taste. Anyway, so mental health issues, sign of um, this negative imagination, even a warped perception of life. All these things, they are devils that make sure that you stay within that level. Hallelujah. Do you see? But God can also help us. Last week we read the scripture, the binding of the strong man. Hallelujah. So you know, if you want your perception of beauty to clear, God wants to bind the strong man. So if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. The next verse. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has that one come unto you. So that's how the kingdom comes. The removal of devils by the Spirit of God means that now the kingdom of God can come to you. Hallelujah. Did you understand? Yeah. I spoke to, I, I, I was there, I was speaking to a, a person that I realized that the person will not be married. Like, I'm talking about a gentleman, not a guy. He'll be old. And I knew that there were devils following him. But if you tell him, he won't believe. He won't believe. See, at times, a simple step here, only you can become a complicated thing. Do you see? Let's go. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house? So now we learn that all the various levels of your being is a house. Do you understand? And here our focus is on the external part. So every level, if, as even your imagination, what you consider good, what you consider beautiful, what you consider nice, what you consider, uh, what makes you content and fulfilling, fulfilled, all these things are houses. And God wants to fill it. Do you see? But there's a strong man. Now, there's a, it's a strong man. Hallelujah. It's not a weak man because your vessel has been yielded to him. It's not a weak man. It means that you can also make that strong man weak by taking your vessel back. 
by disagreeing with the, with the fact that it is influencing your vessel that way. So he says that that strong man's house, when you go there, you can't go and just spoil his goods, except you do what? You first bind the strong man. Hallelujah. And then he will spoil his house. And that's what we want to do. Is there any afflicted? Let him pray. And the aim of the prayer is that the strong man be bound. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? The aim of the prayer is that the strong man be bound. And that's what we want to go to God about. And I want you to be sincere. What you have not seen, you can't really pray about. So if you have seen something, then you can pray. Hallelujah. I don't know what you have seen concerning yourself. I know the limitations that you find that the enemy has placed before you. But the enemy is so much everywhere that I can guarantee that everyone here has something to pray about. Hallelujah. Please understand. Yeah. When we go to God, I said, these devils are easier to cast out. Hallelujah. So God can cast it out. A word from God can come into your mind. It can enter your heart. And by the time you realize that pressure on your soul has been lifted, then now you, are, you are now free to consider things as one who has free will. So if you want God to help you with this, to see the foolishness of your ways. And when God begins to speak to you that way, listen to him. Let him talk to you. Let him talk to you. So if you depressed it, maybe you have been thinking that it's normal, it's normal, because you don't want to admit that there's a problem. This is a good time to admit it before God. Well, that's how we come out. We must accept that this is a problem. This is a sin against God. This does not align with what God wants for us. We must accept that. Then now we must look to God for help, right? Now that help will come and our journey to freedom will come. Now this journey to freedom is shorter. Hallelujah. The enemy will still be fighting you along the way as you are trying to reach out to God. Bringing things in your mind, bringing ideas, bringing, does God even care? Will God help you? Will God mind you? This thing, cry, what is it? It's not anything. The pastor doesn't know what he's talking about. Do you understand? I hope I don't. But if I do, then your problem persists. Do you see? If I do, then of you, all that you can do is to imagine bad things, right? not just filthy talk, but bad things. So if you certain things happen, certain devils visit you in your dreams, and you are really trying to serve God. At times you don't even see any physical thing you are doing that makes such visitations possible. Maybe if you're watching something, or you're, you're, but, but you don't find that you are doing anything like that, but somehow the enemy has you hostage. I'm saying that that enemy can go. That's your affliction. You can send it to God in prayer. So if you can be there and you are confused, you are just confused. Your mind goes blank. Maybe you have been managing your life with it up to this point. But this is a good time for you to stop. Don't you think it would be nice if it stopped? It could, and it could stop. A simple acceleration into the spirit. You see, that's how this one is not even complicated. A simple acceleration, but you can get your freedom and, and now that your confused mind will stop being confused. But you have to take it seriously. You have to take it seriously. You have to take it seriously. You have to not let anything stop you in the same way that as you are trying to battle evils in the heart, right? the temptations you must battle it in the same way when you zoom in to look for God you have to forget about everything you have to even forget about how you look like you have to become like Hannah as one that is drunk as one that is drunk looking for God that this burden must lift it may be a sickness that keeps repeating itself that sickness can go away I'm telling you God will open your eyes. In all this is an encounter with God that solves it. God will open your eyes. You will see him 
that problem will go away. Or God will show you a step that if you take, that problem will go away. But whatever be the case, the solution will be with God. The solution will be with God. Now he says, you could say, Jack, you've always been depressed. In, in a month, you can be depressed for one third of the month, half of the month. You are depressed, right? And you think that is normal. I'm saying it's not normal. Don't, don't feel ashamed. It's an attack. If you are attacked, what God sees is that someone that needs to be pitied. You see, God, God pities you. God, God has compassion for you. So don't hide. Don't feel ashamed. It's an affliction. And everyone is afflicted. Maybe someone's affliction is not your, your, your own. But when God meets us, the devil has already met us. So things have been restored already. But the beautiful thing is that God can restore us. God can help us. God can sack the enemy from your domain. What you need is an encounter, a touch from God. And even grace to, to push into the spirit. And I believe that that grace is with us this morning. So I want you to take advantage of it. I want you to take advantage of it. Some of you, in your dreams, certain fetish things are taking place. Do you see? It's fetish. In your dream, you find that it happens. I want you to close your eyes. You find that it happens like that. So it's almost like you have an involvement or a connection with something fetish. But you have also not gone to do anything. It's an attack that goes beyond you. God in a vision showed me somebody some time ago, two weeks ago. Now the person just went for a funeral. But the, the person made contact with something in the funeral that was prepared for somebody else. So it was a trap that was set for somebody else. The person made contact with that trap and the person was trapped. And I was like, wow. So it's not every affliction that you intentionally went to bring upon yourself. At times it's a weakness in the bloodline. And we know how these bloodline things are, they are tendencies that if you don't take care, they will register themselves in your life. So you see such fetish things, right? This is a good time to pray to God that such things will leave your dream. Maybe you're, in your dream you see dead bodies. The enemy is trying to trap you in a certain way. Because you, you can assess and see that it's not a good information. At times it may be a good information. It's not every dead body that is bad. But you can sense that something, some prayer, something is, is, is inside your dream. Something is there. A presence. An evil presence. Is any afflicted? Is any afflicted? Is any afflicted? Are you afflicted? Are you afflicted? My message to you, which is God's message, is that this is a good time to pray. How come you are a girl, but a guy, a girl, another girl is sexually attractive to you? I said, even in your mind as to sexual attraction, there is a, there is, there is, there is a devil that is there. There is a devil that is there. And that devil can leave your mind. That devil can leave your mind. Lema seke le me shatana balaba. Rama mama seke le me shatana manamalaba. Beloved, your God won the victory. And he won the victory at every level. Including this level. Including this level.
I want you to reach out to God. I want you to pray to God. You are not praying to me. You are praying to God. He is the one that has power to deliver you. He is the one that has power to deliver you. Lord, I'm going to pray for you, but I want you to go first, soon first. I want you to go. So that the word of faith will reach your heart. So that the word of faith will reach your heart. Let's go, let's go. Reach out to God, reach out to God. Reach out to God, that his hand may rest upon you. That his hand may rest upon you. That his hand may rest upon you. That his hand may touch you. That the chains may break. That the chains may break. Like that the chains may break. That the chains may break. That the chains may break. That the affliction may stop. 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 That it 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 may stop. The devil is trying to intimidate you. The devil has been trying to intimidate you with images for some time now. In the name of Jesus, may the power of God come upon you and secure your freedom. In the name of Jesus, whoever you are, Whoever you are, the devil has been trying to intimidate you for some time now. Le makaba lebe shatara bana ba. Ramande le ke shatara bana 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 ba. Ramande le ke shatara bana 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 ba. Ramolo ko se mene ke lebe shatara bana ba. I want you to pray that Lord help me, 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 Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. Oh, let him have the things that hold you. And it's I want you to lift up your tongue if you can. Will descend upon your life and make you whole. Oh, let the sun. Spirit and his love, and until your heart and satisfy your soul, oh, let him have the things that hold you, and his spirit, like a dove, will descend upon your life and make you. Thank you. 
come and see.